Good morning, everyone. I'm Ching Yang Wei with metric number 196053. The topic I'm going to talk about today is comparative hybrid life cycle assessment and life cycle cost analysis on conventional concrete and concrete with cement replacement in Malaysia. So I will begin with introduction, followed by objective, methodology, results and discussions, and finally, conclusions and recommendations. So let me begin with introduction. In introduction, hybrid life cycle assessment, HLCA, is developed to enhance the completeness of inventory data. Hybrid LCA and life cycle cost analysis are developed to assess the environmental impacts and economic impacts of conventional concrete, fly ash concrete, silica film concrete, and ground granulated dust furnace like GGBS concrete. The objective of these studies is to develop and extend the application of hybrid LCA with the latest process data for concrete production. Secondly, to quantify the carbon emissions and life cycle costs for the conventional concrete and concrete with cement replacement materials from cradle to gate. And thirdly, to compare the global warming potential of conventional concrete and concrete with cement replacement materials in each phase. Let's just move on with methodology. Objective one is achieved starting with goal and scope definition. The standards are referred to ISO 14040 and ISO 14044. The functional unit is one cubic meter. System boundary is from cradle to gate. Geographical area is in Malaysia. Then move on to life cycle inventory analysis. In this phase, inputs and outputs of the system is identified Data is collected from ICE, MIR, LCID, IEA, and DOSM and input into Excel spreadsheet to perform analysis. Objective two is achieved through life cycle impact assessment and life cycle cost analysis. Life cycle impact assessment implement midpoint impact assessment method IPCC 2013 GWP International and associate LCI result to midpoint impact category, global warming potential. Life cycle cost analysis use stepwise 2006 monetization method to convert carbon emission into monetary value. Objective three is achieved by interpretation. Global warming potential between the concrete is compared in each phase. The cradle to gate is from extraction to production with an accident system boundary of input output table. So let's just move on with results and discussion. From the figure, conventional concrete has the highest carbon emissions followed by silica film concrete, fly ash concrete, and GBS concrete. The use of green materials reduced 7 to 37% of carbon emission from conventional concrete. The results are validated with carbon emission reducers about 5 to 57% by using concrete with cement replacement materials. Then figure two shows the life cycle cost is quantified using stepwise 2006 monetization method. And this life cycle cost due to global warming potential can be used to compare with other environmental impacts. Next, followed by the figure three, phase-wise comparison. The raw material extraction has the highest global warming potential followed by the production and transportation phase. In raw material extraction phase, Cement production contributed about 90% of global warming potential. In transportation phase, reduction of cement in concrete indicated that more trips can be saved for transportation. In production phase, green materials reduced 20 to 35% of carbon emissions from conventional concrete. In order to reduce greater environmental impact, efforts can be focused on raw material extraction. So let's first move on with figure four. From the chart, carbon emission decreased with the increase in percentage of cement replacement materials. However, cost of concrete fluctuates due to various prices of cement replacement materials and different design uses. Although the cost for production of silica film concrete and flat ash concrete is higher than conventional concrete, but it can still be saving for long term. Concrete with cement replacements has better durability and can reduce costs for future maintenance and repair. So move on with figure five. 
the cost of each raw materials is obtained from Quantity Surveyor Online Malaysia and Alibaba. The cost of fly ash concrete and silica film concrete is higher than conventional concrete because the mixed design does not reduce the use of cement significantly as compared to GGBS concrete. GGBS concrete has the lowest cost because ozolanic reaction of GGBS help to increase the compressive strength and less cement is used for strength gaining. Thus, the cost reduced significantly. So move on to the final figure, figure six. From the chart, carbon emission using input-output LCA takes up to 41% from hybrid LCA. It carries important role and cannot be neglected. The completeness of system boundary is enhanced with hybrid LCA. So in conclusion, the use of fly ash, silica film, or ground granulated dust slag, dust furnace slag reduced the global warming potential of concrete significantly, so contributed to achieving green technology master plan 2013. There are a few recommendations that can be improved for future study by utilizing cradle-to-grave approach, assessing other environmental impacts such as ozone depletion, acidification, eutrophication, and lastly, social indicator can also be implemented in future study. So that's all for me. Thank you.